In this video, we're going to talk about how to use a loop to go through a string character by character in Java. So if we want to loop through a string, a string is just a sequence of characters. Now how they're represented doesn't really matter for us right now. The thing that's important is to remember a string is made up of one character followed by another character followed by another character and so on. And so we can think of the string as character zero, character one, character two, and so on. So whenever you see that pattern showing up in a program, that's an indication that you're going to want to use a loop to actually do the processing. So inside that loop, we're going to do whatever we need to each character, whether it's modify the character, count the character, whatever it is we want to do. We do that inside the loop and we use the loop index to keep track of where we are in the string. So we'll start at index zero and go through index length minus one if we want to cover the whole string. Or we could do the first half of the string, the last half. We could do some random substring in the middle. The key is, is that we want to loop from wherever we want to start in the string to wherever we want to stop in the string. There's no specific indices we have to use as long as those are valid indexes into the string. So here I have a Java program that has a string. It has a variable called num spaces. We'll see what that is in a moment. And then it prints those two things out. So if I run this, you can see it prints the sentence. Now, one thing to notice here, if you want to print double quotes, you do have to use the escape character to escape them. Otherwise, Java would see double quotes here as the end of this string. And so it would give you a syntax error. So the escape character that you see right here, that's going to tell Java that I want you to ignore the next character as a Java construct. It's just something I want you to treat as the actual character. Okay, so now let's write our loop. We'll start at index zero and we'll continue until we get to sentence.length. So now inside our loop, let's suppose at first we just want to print the characters of the sentence and we want to print it character by character. So the way we get the character from the string is we use the char at method, giving it the index of the character we want. And now I can say, I'll print the character. And then when I'm done with this loop, notice I'm not using print line, I'm using print. So I'm going to put a print line statement here so that I get a new line at the end of this. So now let's run this. And you can see it does print the sentence character by character. Now, of course, the only thing I've really done is just show that I've done the same thing I did with a print line on the whole sentence. So let's suppose I want to make this a little fancier. I could put each of these characters inside brackets. And now when I run, looks like I have an error. I'm missing the plus here. Well, now when I run, you can see that each character of the string is in its own set of brackets. This doesn't seem to be super interesting because again, it makes uglier output if I just printed the string as a whole. So let's actually go and check to see how many spaces we have. And there's a couple ways I can do this. I could just say if C equals the space character, and if that's the case, I can increment num spaces. And when I run this, you see it gives me the sentence and then counts the spaces, which if we look, that is the correct count. So let's go ahead and add back our code where we print the character. And this will let us see some of the other things we can do. So here we have these characters, but every character has a numeric value. And this is something you can exploit for modifying characters if you're doing something like encryption or something like that. So suppose I want to get the value of the string. In this case, we want to see the ASCII value, which is an integer. If I cast this to an integer and then run my code, you can see I get the ASCII values. Now ASCII values are just numbers that represent the individual characters. Java actually uses Unicode, but we're not going to get into the character encodings right now. The key is, is that all of these characters have a numeric representation and that's this integer value. Now doing something like this is a little bit confusing, I think. So I actually like to make an additional variable called ASCII value and then do my cast here. And that cleans things up a little bit more. And so again, once I have this integer, I can do things with this integer if I wanted to. Now, suppose I want to shift all of these characters by one. I want to have a really simple Caesar cipher encryption. So here I have the actual numeric value. The character class has a two string method. And if I pass in the ASCII value plus one and run this, you'll notice I get all of the characters shifted by one. Now you may say, what are these exclamation points? If you look at an ASCII table, 
such as this one from ASCIItable.com, you can see the space character is ASCII value 32. If we add one to that, we get 33. That's the ASCII code for an exclamation point. So that's just one simple way to do encryption. Not a very good encryption. This can get broken pretty easily, but it's just something that uh, that's good to be aware of. Now, there's also a lot of other helper methods that we could use for characters to check things. So for example, so you can see we can check if something's a digit. We can check if something is a letter, if it's upper or lowercase, if it's a space. There's lots of different options we have when it comes to things we can check each character for. And by looping through the string, it gives us the option to process that string character by character instead of as a whole string. So I will leave this code as is when I post it. But let's add a print line just so that there's some extra stuff. So here we are getting the character at the index. Here we're going to get the integer value of that character. And here shift the character by one and print. And of course we have to use the ASCII value to do that. Again, there's a lot of directions you could take this to make more interesting code. The idea of this video is just to show you the basic building blocks of what you need. From here, there's a lot of things that you can extend this to.